now please to the first epistle of John and we're in John uh, this evening, 1st John chapter 1 the first epistle of John please and chapter 1 1st John chapter 1 verse 5 and the apostle John says this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. And if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Let's take a wee moment and we'll bow in prayer, please. Our Father tonight in heaven, we thank thee, Lord, for thy precious word of truth. And we pray tonight, Lord, as we seek to deliver the message that thou hast given to us, that, Lord, this message will go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, still all our hearts tonight. We thank thee, Lord, for Paul's ministry and song to us. And we pray, Lord, you'll bless it to every heart. And now, Lord, as we turn to the sacred page, Lord, speak to us tonight, we pray. For we ask it in and through the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. There's a word tonight, friend. There's a word tonight in the English vocabulary. And it's a word tonight that sends the shiver down everybody's spine. It's a word tonight that everybody fears. And it's a word tonight that everybody dreads. And it's a word tonight is the greatest scourge in the medical realm. And that word tonight begins with the letter C, doesn't it? Cancer. I don't know about you, friend, but do you know what it is? You're nearly afraid to ask anybody now what's wrong with them. If you take some sort of a sickness or a cold and it lasts a wee bit longer than what you expected it to be, do you know isn't it true? The first thing you wonder is it cancer. There's a boy come into my work, my last place of employment, and he complained with a sore neck. I says, Dean, he, call, he was called Dean, we called him Dino. He says, Dino, you not well, ach, he says, too many birthdays. But this went on and this went on until one time, about a fortnight later, I heard he was in the hospital. Dino was a sort of a hardy sort of a man. Sort of a tough guy. 
And I heard he was in the hospital and I lifted the phone one time, one, one morning it was, and I said, Dino, I heard you were in hospital, are you alright? Dennis Craney done something that day I never dreamed that Dennis Craney would do. He broke down on the other end of the phone, friends, and I'll tell you something now. You could have knocked me down with a feather. I've got the big C, he says. I've got cancer. And all they've given to me is weeks. Now that's awful news, friends, isn't it? And he only got weeks. And it was about this time last year I was conducting a gospel mission with Bertie Johnson of the Lifeboat. And it was during that mission Dennis passed away. But Dennis got saved. And Dennis got saved because God brought before him his need of salvation. And the local free Presbyterian minister had the joy of leading him to the Lord. I want you to know tonight, my dear unsaved friend, the Bible teaches something tonight that's worse than cancer. You would say to me there could never be anything worse than cancer. Well, I'll tell you, friend, tonight, there's something worse than cancer. The Bible calls it tonight sin. And sin tonight is the cancer of all cancers. Because sin tonight is not only the cancer of the body, sin tonight is the cancer of the soul. I was listening to the news the other day and it said one out of three will die of cancer in five years' time. You imagine that. One out of three will die with cancer. Do you know what the Bible tells me? One out of every one will die because of sin. My dear unsaved friend tonight, I want to talk to you tonight about sin. The Bible makes it clear tonight it's the cancer of all cancers. It's the cancer of the soul. And my friend, the Bible teaches us tonight that the spiritual cancer that is called sin is killing your soul. The Bible makes it clear tonight, my dear unsafe friend tonight, that you were born into this world with the spiritual cancer within. None of us can escape it, friends. There's no medical cure for this spiritual cancer. Because you see, it says in the Bible, sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Sin's worse than cancer. I'll tell you something that's good about cancer, friends, and many of us can hardly say anything good about cancer. Cancer has often been the means of bringing someone to Christ. Gordon and I were speaking to a lady today whose husband or brother it was diagnosed, not right, Gordon, with cancer. 
And because of it, that person has now come to Christ. But the spirit you'll cancer that the Bible calls sin tonight doesn't bring anybody to Christ that brings people to hell. And first and foremost tonight I want to declare to you what the Bible says is the reality of sin. Sin's a reality, friends. Sin's a real disease. There's no escaping it. There's no getting out of it. And listen, sin's more than smoking. Sin's more than drinking a bottle of scotch every day. Sin's more than drugs. Sin's more than murder. Do you know what sin is? Sin tonight is breaking God's laws. Do you realize tonight, friends, that the reality of sin draws you and I tonight under the judgment and wrath of God? You see, friend, the Bible tells us, James 2 and 10, For whosoever keepeth the whole law, and yet offend in one point, is guilty of all. And you know what the Bible says in 1 John 1 and 10 that we've read? If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. Listen to you. Listen to me this evening, friend. Are you and I prepared to call God a liar? People tell me, oh, well now, Mr. McConnell, you know, I don't drink now, and, and, I, don't, and I don't smoke, and, and I do the best I can. No, no, I wouldn't say I've sinned. No, I wouldn't say I've sinned. <coughs> person who talks like that, friends, is calling God a liar. I want you to know tonight, my dear unseer friend, 1 Kings 8 and 46 says, For there is no man that sinneth not. I remember my father many years ago, way back in 1972, the, he was applying for the RUC. And I remember the recruiting sergeant asked him, Did you ever break the law? The father said, I don't, can't recall ever breaking the law. He says, Well, did you ever flog an orchard when you were a youngster? He says, ah, I did do that, all right. Well, he says, you've broken the law. You see, do you know what's wrong, friends? We think so little of sin today. Friend, if you break the law on one point, any of those commandments, that's sin tonight. And the reality of sin is, it brings us under tonight the condemnation of God. Every sin that we commit, friends, listen to me. Every sin that we commit, whether it's by thought, whether it's by word, or whether it's by deed, did you know tonight it's being recorded? Every sin that we commit, it's being recorded. And do you see the day you die? Your sin will bring you... Listen, I'm only preaching what's in the Bible. I believe we need to get back to the Bible. And preach what's in the Bible. The Bible teaches us that sin will bring us to hell. But one day God will bring us before the judgment. And you know what it says there? And the books will be opened. And every sin that you have committed, my dear own safe friend, will be brought against you. Every last one of them. And every sin that you've committed by thought, word, and deed, tonight they're being recorded in the books above. And every sin that's being recorded brings you under the judgment of God. My friend tonight, I want to ask you a question. Plain 
a, a plain and simple question. Do you realize tonight what would happen if you were to die unsaved? And I'm not asking you tonight, do you realize what, you, what will happen if you die if you don't go to church? No, 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 it's not that. Well, do you realize what would happen tonight if you were to die unsaved? Listen, forget about dying as a Protestant. You'll go to hell as quick as dying as a Protestant. You will if you die as a Catholic. Forget about your church denomination. Listen, you'll go to hell as quick going to the Baptist church than going to any other church. My friend, right, sin this evening is dragging you to hell. This is the reality of sin tonight. Friend, this evening you and I have been born in sin. We've been shaping in iniquity. And my friend tonight, that sin is dragging you down. I've got bad news for you, friend. You've got cancer of the soul. All have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. That's the reality of sin. But God wants to tell you tonight not only about the reality of sin, God wants to talk to you tonight about the ruin of sin. Do you know what sin does? It ruins hearts. It ruins homes. It ruins health. <coughs> Friends, sin, sin ruins tonight. Sin ruins lives. You take a wee look at the drunk walking down the street there. Look at the mess sin has left us. But listen, you don't have to drink to be ruined by sin. George Best and Alex Higgins is one of the two prime examples how sin ruins lives. My former pastor, the late Ivan Thompson, some of you may remember Ivan. Ivan Thompson told me going to George Best or going to Alex Higgins to tell them their need of salvation was a waste of time. He says, because the two of them could have tied you nuts as far as the scriptures was concerned. He says, Alex Higgins was a genius in knowing the scriptures. But you know, friend, knowing biblical truth, knowing all about the Bible, just knowing it tonight isn't enough. It doesn't stop sin ruining the life. My friend, this evening, sin, there's the reality of sin, tonight, and there's the ruin of sin because the wages of sin is death. Sin's the ruination of all people tonight. And my dear unsaved friend, tonight, listen, you're under the curse and you're under tonight the penalty of sin. Does, can I ask you now a wee question? Does some sin tonight that you have committed, does it haunt you? Some sin that you have committed in the past, is it always coming back up into your mind and it troubles you? Sin perhaps that you have committed and tonight you're living under the awful auspices of regret. You see, sin ruins. Sin ruins. Because of sin tonight, listen to me. Because of sin, your heart, your soul, is under its awful curse right now. Your sin tonight is the cancer of the soul. 
And unless you have that sin forgiven, that sin will bring you into a lost, Christless hell. But here, listen. Listen to me. It's not all that bad now. I know the Bible talks about the reality of sin and I know tonight the Bible talks about the ruin of sin. Thank God the Bible talks about the remedy for sin. Praise God there's a remedy. You know what the remedy is? Boys, I, I, I love this bit. It says this evening, it says the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Do you know tonight there's hope for the worst of sinners? Thank God there's no hopeless case in the eyes of the Almighty. There's no sin dirty enough. There's no sin filthy enough that my blessed Savior cannot cleanse. There's no sin wicked enough. And there's no sin terrible enough to that my blessed Savior won't forgive. Thank God Jesus is the Savior of sinners. And he can save the worst of sinners. The vilest offender that truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. You may be here tonight. I don't know if there's anybody here or not, but maybe there's one here. And you would say to me, preacher, I have tried this and it didn't work. What does anybody like that tonight? I have tried this, but it hasn't worked. Do you know the real reason why it didn't work for you? It's simple because there never was repentance. You see, people think they can get saved and live forever way right, right? Well, you can't because the Lord Jesus said twice in the one chapter, except ye, what is it? Repent. You see, if you want your sins forgiven, if you want to be cleared of the curse of sin, you have to repent from sin. You have to turn away from sin. You have to say goodbye to sin as you come to Christ. See, too many people think they can live with salvation in one hip pocket and sin in the other hip pocket. There's so many today and they're walking about with a spirit. Do you ever see them? The one a bit of a spirit to him. One foot in the world and one foot God's way. Do you ever see them? They're like a spiritual jack in the box. Saved and lost. Saved and lost. They know where they are. But listen, friends. If you're ever going to be saved, if you're ever going to have your sins forgiven, there has to be repentance. Repentance. There needs to be that soul. Do you know when you're really saved, you'll, you'll know what, what it is. Before I was saved, I would have switched straightly. I don't want to go in what I mean, that means my language wasn't good. And I remember the night I was saved, I was saved on the 26th of August 1985 in St. James's Parish Church of Hall, Long and Clay. People think you'll never get saved in the Church of Ireland, but glory to God, I was saved in it. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you so I was well saved. But anyway, I was, I was saved that night. And I went to work the next day. And there's a boy who I work with called Norman Gordon. And he would have switched for two people. And do you know someone, for the first time, I could hear people cursing. Just the change Jesus brings. That's how you know you've got the witness of the Spirit within. Because then you suddenly are exposed to the reality of sin around you. You see, you have to repent. But I want to tell you something tonight, friends. No matter what sin you've committed, no matter where you are, to, I want you to know the arms of my blessed Savior is wide open to welcome. There's a wee Roman Catholic girl by the name of Sheila O'Callaghan from West Belfast. Belfast, sorry. From West Belfast. And her mother and father had no objections to her going to the wee brethren Sunday school 
just around the other side of the street. She went to that brethren's Sunday school and she was taught faithfully the, of the gospel, but she was one of these wee lassies that you couldn't handle her. Do you know what I mean? She was one of these wee lassies you couldn't handle her. She was always sent home for bad behavior. But listen to me. Her old brethren Sunday school teacher never gave up on her. That's what I call a wonderful Sunday school teacher. Never give up on her. Well, the time came, she was too old. And she lived a life of awful sin, friends. She went into a life of drink and drugs. And she slept with every man that she could get her hands on to. She plunged into the depths of sin so deep. But one night in bed she began to cough and she began to cough up blood. And as she brought up blood upon the bed clothes, all she could think of was she's going to die. Do you know the first thing she thought of? She thought of the words of her old Sunday school teacher. I want to encourage you Sunday school teachers. The wee rascal that could be giving your class a hard time, listen, could be the only one out of the whole lot could be listening. And when Sheila O'Callaghan coughed up blood that day on her bed clothes, the first thing she began to think of was the words of her old Sunday school teacher. Do you know what Sheila O'Callaghan done? She got out of the bed before she even rung for the doctor and she got down at the side of the bed and asked the Lord to forgive her and come into her heart to save her and glory to God she was saved. When they got her stabilized in hospital the first journey she made was round to the old brethren Sunday school teacher. Do you remember me? Do you remember me, she says. Do, do I not remember you? I spent more time running you home than bringing you into Sunday school. She says, I want to know, I want you to know I got saved two months ago. He says, how did you get saved, Sheila? Because that's a miracle. How did I get saved? One night I coughed up blood and I thought my life was coming to an end. And remember the Sunday morning you taught us, prepare to meet thy God. And remember the following Sunday where you taught us, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And that night I got out of my bed and asked the Lord into my heart and I was saved. I can tell you tonight there's no case hopeless for my blessed Savior to, to forgive. But Sheila O'Callaghan suffered from a problem called assurance. She was troubled about the sin of her past. And because of her ill health, the doctor sent her up to the North Antrim coast to spend the summer there so that the salt air would help to heal whatever was wrong with the lungs. And Sheila and her wee Bible went up to the North Antrim coast and one day she was so troubled about the sin. She was so troubled about the past. She got down at the side of her bed and said, Lord, I'm going to the giant's causeway. And Lord, I need blessed assurance to know that I'm yours. I need to have some assurance, Lord, some assurance, Lord, that my sins have been forgiven. And off she went to the giant's causeway, along with her wee Bible. Before she opened her Bible, Silo Callahan prayed, Lord, from your word will you speak to me? It's always good to pray before you open your Bible. Lord, as I open your word, will you speak to me? As she opened her Bible, 
Sheila said there was a breeze came across the Atlantic and the pages of her Bible fluttered and they fluttered and fluttered to the book of Mecca and when the, when the breeze had finished the pages fell open to Mecca chapter 7 and verse 18 and this is what Sheila O'Callaghan read because of where the pages fell open Sheila O'Callaghan said the finger of God was in the breeze my friend God makes no mistakes and as you turn down to the sacred page this is what you read who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage he retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy he will turn again he will have compassion upon us he will subdue our iniquities but listen to this wee bit and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea as Sheila looked over the Atlantic waters, God spoke to her and said, Sheila, all of your sins, they're in the deepest part of the sea. And never will I remember them again. Does your sin trouble you, dear? I want to take you now to Calvary's cross and I want to see you, you to see tonight one who was crucified to that old rugged cross because he died there for that sin of yours that very sin God's son was crucified that sin tonight that's dragging you to hell Christ died for that sin on the cross and I want you to know that his blood was shed. Do you want to know why he died there? Because there was no other good enough to pay the price for sin. I want you to know tonight that the Lord Jesus Christ is the remedy for sin. So many people tonight believe in a pile of nonsense. I talked to a man a number of years ago about this. He says, you know something, that's why I take my communion. Because if I take my communion, when I drink the communion wine, that washes my sins away. My friend, that couldn't be any further from the truth. If you're eating at the Lord's table and you're not saved, you're eating and drinking damnation to your soul. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it's in the Bible. No, friend, the remedy for sin is in the Saviour. And tonight, tonight, I want you to rest assured that the Savior calls you tonight. And you come tonight to the Savior and you make him yours. Because this very night could be the night. that the last call would come. Now listen to me, friends. Christ died to save you. Christ died to take your sins. Are you going to reject them? Are you going to turn the Savior away tonight who who died on that cross for you because I'll tell you this for the Savior to die on that cross is more than what your soul could ever hope for Jesus died for you 
that your sin could be saved or forgiven, that Jesus died, that your soul could be saved. And tonight, I trust that you'll come to the Saviour and make him yours now. Because tonight he calls. And you need the Saviour. And you need him tonight. And you need him now. And you come and trust him. Because he's the only Saviour. And he can be yours tonight. Now let's take a wee moment and we'll bow in prayer together. Every head bow, please. I want you to just think very seriously tonight about your soul and about your sin. And I want you to think about tonight the blessed Saviour. And tonight he's here tonight and he wants to forgive you. And he wants to save you tonight. And I can tell you there's not a sinner Jesus turned away. And he'll not turn you away, love. And he'll not turn you away either, sir. And you need to come to him tonight before for you it's forever too late. Would you like to be saved tonight? Would you like to know that your sins are forgiven? Would you like to know tonight that you can have peace with God and your sins finally thank God forever gone? Will you can tonight just for you sit it was a Monday night when I was saved. I had no notion. But God spoke to me that night. Listen, God could be speaking to you tonight. God has been speaking to you tonight. He wants to take that sin away. He wants to set you free. He wants to forgive you. But you have got to ask Him. And you have got to call. You say to me, George, how do I do this? You just sit where you are. And you just simply pray this prayer with me. That's how I was saved. Age 20 I was. Wild as a March hare. But that night I came as a sinner. And I have never been the same again. Lord Jesus, just now where I sit, where I sit, I call upon thee now. In the very place of repentance, And Lord Jesus, I seek thee now to come into my heart and to be my Savior and to be my Lord. Lord, I hate the sins that I've committed. Lord, I hate the sin within my life. And I pray now, Lord Jesus, Come into my heart and be my Savior. Forgive me for my sin. And cleanse me in your precious blood. And Lord, save my never dying soul. Lord Jesus, Come to me now. Save me and bless me. And Lord, bless me with thine assurance that I have peace with God. 
Now with every head bowed now and every eye closed and God's people praying. Listen, I'm not going to ask you to put your hand up or look up or nod up. But I want you tonight, if you've prayed that prayer, to make sure you tell someone. Come to me as you leave. Just say, George, I have prayed that prayer. Because you've got to tell someone. You've got to tell someone. And don't leave tonight without telling someone. Perhaps, why don't you tell someone that person that has brought you? Friends, start for heaven tonight. Let Christ take that sin away. The awful guilt of the past away. And start on you tonight. And start for heaven with Christ as your blessed Savior. And make sure you tell someone, friends, it's vital that you do. In the quietness of these moments, I pray, Lord, tonight, I pray that you'll give deciding grace and Lord, that thou will indeed give grace tonight for someone to confess you as their Lord and Savior. Defeat the powers of darkness and Lord, claim victory over perishing souls tonight, for we pray in our Savior's name.